Hey, it's John Wynn. In November of 2019, I exhibited the women at the In Liquid Gallery at the Crane Building in Philadelphia. Viewers walked in and were greeted by me in the form of my portrait, self-portrait, JYW. Other than me, though, it was all about women. Uh, the important relationships in my life, or many of them, starting with my mother, uh, this piece, Portrait of Dina. This piece was done in the last year of Dina's life, and we collaborated on it, working with a steel uh, cabinet that had been in her studio and was where she stored her welding gear. I love the idea of using that to house, literally and figuratively, her uh, diverse interests uh, from, of course, art, fashion, travel, cooking, culture, and to show the, uh, you know, the, the sophisticated and then the real gutsy side. Uh, she was also a bit of an athlete. There's her tennis racket and sneakers, um, clothes from the sculpture gear to evening, evening wear. Here is her granddaughter, my niece Gavi, uh, captured at age 14 in her Katy Perry Halloween wig and with her glee uh, pointing finger, foam finger, whatever it's called. Um, Gavi and I had a great time doing this, and it's amazing that now, four or five years later, she looks at it and just laughs that, you know, she's like another person already. But this really captures a moment, and I think it's especially evident with a young person, but for all of us, these portraits and our possessions are time capsules. And this approach to art making really brings that home. This is Laura, portrait of Laura B. And Laura has lived in five cities in the United States. Each city became a shelf on a map telling her story. Portrait of Kim, I married adventure. That's one of my favorite bits of it. And Kim's life is full of adventure and photographs documenting those adventures, other souvenirs, all arranged on a shelving unit evocative of one in her home. Portrait of Lynn, this was the first piece that I did. My friend Lynn, who was uh, a bit of the guinea pig, uh, helping me figure out the, the protocol and the methodology, and then the physical look of, the, of these pieces. They're not portraits like a clay uh, bust. It's not, they're, they're, not, they're not approaching portraiture like Rodin did, let's say. Uh, I am using a lot of busts but I'm using them in a very different way, more found object, supplementing the, the, the subject's own possessions with uh, busts, mannequins, dress forms that I purchased to bring that, that um, body reference. This one's Portrait of Jenny. She is a bling girl. She loves her sparkle and her boas and her uh, female tropes. Uh, she's equally substantial, and there's a stack of books that uh, kind of defines her holding the whole piece up. Portrait of Wendy, uh, the owner of Metropolitan Bakery, very discreet and quiet. Uh, her portrait reflects that, I think. The M baseball cap is her daily signature. You can see this kind of uh, carnival-esque atmosphere. I really wanted this to be fun and celebratory. And as you explore, here's a portrait of Hillary. Uh, Hillary's cabinet of curiosity really matches my personal aesthetic. So it was a, a gratifying and pretty easy piece to do. Uh, Hillary and I were the co-founders of my jewelry business, Maximal Art. So we collaborate well, and this, this portrait was a great opportunity to do that. Back here, we have a couple of interesting pieces. The one on the, on the wall, this one with the turquoise background, Portrait of Alicia. I painted the wall uh, that color, evoking Mexican street markets. Uh, Alicia's Latin American heritage uh, is evident in all of these uh, different objects that she gave me. The ladder was her symbol for striving, always climbing. And the octopus uh, represented the different 
different um, aspects of her life as a, a mom and an employee and a rocker and a daughter, etc. Portrait of Anne, Anne, a fellow artist, drew that self-portrait, but gave me the objects to create the bigger self-portrait of her, uh, the artist at work. Uh, Anne probably has oil paint in her blood. She is just such a painter, and I wanted to, cre to evoke that uh, commitment, passion um, in, in this portrait. <laughs> I like the hot sauce in the whiskey bottle. That also tells you a lot about Anne. And then this mirror, <laughs> there I am filming this. The mirror um, is a chance for the viewer to put themselves in Anne's, Anne's shoes and imagine what would their self-portrait look like? What would your self-portrait look like? This is a portrait of Joan Shep. Uh, Joan, when I told her about this project, had one request. She wanted to have the most fabulous outfit uh, of anyone. And I think she accomplished that with an early Japanese Yoji Yamamoto skirt and a vintage kimono and more and more. <laughs> the bulletin board is a mixture of private and public Joan, uh, very her, the way that she, her life really was fashion and her family and the two, um, the two live together very well. From maximal Joan to much more minimal, the portrait here at the desk is a portrait of Lauren. And Lauren, who's a little younger than a lot of my peers, when I talked to her about it, said, well, John, I really don't have a lot of stuff. That's not my thing. But what she did have was a very thorough Pinterest page, um, which was a bit of a digital self-portrait. I suggested that we share her Pinterest page uh, as her portrait and then I took it one step further and created a, a, a Pinterest account where viewers to the show could create their own portraits and uh, you know, share them with the community. That is still available, so if you look on the website uh, under Lauren's portrait, you'll find a link to that Pinterest page. This is a portrait of Sarah. It's in the form of a theater, a marionette theater, the Teatro del Quattro Stagione. Uh, Sarah was the extra two hands for a dear friend of hers who made marionettes and wrote marionette performances to entertain her friends. Sarah is sitting on the edge of the stage, reflecting on her life and on her past, a little wistful with the passage of time. Here are headshots of Sarah from uh, Ingenue to what's euphemistically known as a character actress. and. Uh, there's a lot of memories here for the actress and for the person. At first, the walls of the theater were solid, but Sarah said that an actor needs an escape from the theater. So that was when I added the little side wings to the walls so that uh, she could escape. You can see across the room the cacophony, the joy, the color. Here on the column is a portrait of Jennifer. Jennifer and I are colleagues and friends. She is dressed in an athleisure luxe outfit, uh, a term she pretty much told me about. Um, she did the top herself with a ble bleach, bleaching a sweatshirt. And you have high fashion and you have Nikes and you have family memories and you have uh, spirituality in the form of a collection of Hamsas. You have some girly girl glamor with that chandelier. We are a mixture of our objects. We are both high and low. Uh, we are not to be defined by the things that we possess, but the things that we possess definitely help shape who we are. This is a portrait of Barbara. There's a Pina Bausch video uh, playing on that scarf. Barbara is a very elegant woman who loves uh, classicism. The Renaissance bust is a tribute to that historical side of her. She's an interior designer. The fabrics, swatches, there's uh, blueprints that she's drawn, or tracing paper with sketches that she's drawn. There's a gorgeous upholstered moon in a Schumacher fabric. But then there's also little whimsical notes like candy and 
her false eyelashes, which she enjoyed sharing with uh, in the portrait. This is a portrait of Jill. Jill wrote me a Dear John letter when I asked her to participate in the project, saying that she really didn't think she could do it. She wasn't a stuff collector. She was minimal. She got rid of things she didn't use. Well, the letter was such a portrait in itself that I asked her if we could use that as the foundation for her portrait, and she kindly agreed. My portrait of Meta, when I told Meta about the project, she said, John, it's very simple. I just want you to show me balancing my work, my kids, and my weight. Well, I took her at her word and did exactly that. Uh, P.S. She also wanted to be shown doing that in a fabulous outfit, and she supplied the gorgeous dress, which is by one of her Danish uh, colleagues. Meta and I met because she organizes executive education programs and did one with my father's Wharton Fellows program, which I participated in. The theme was design, innovation, and strategy. So that kind of bridged my jewelry world um, and my art world. Next to Meta's portrait, I also bridged my two worlds by having a charm bar. This was a place where visitors to the show could create their own self-portrait by assembling a collection of charms, pieces that spoke to them, clustering them just so, uh, picking a chain or a ribbon or a cord, and playing designer. The charm bar is a fixture in my jewelry company, and I love the idea of translating it into the art space, um, creating synergy and bringing my two worlds closer together. I would say that that is a, a goal of mine in everything that I do, finding ways to bridge the different aspects of my worlds, much as I found ways to bridge uh, my different circles uh, of friends and family by putting, bringing them together in this show. On the opening day, we had a luncheon for the women. It was a long table set down the middle of the gallery and it was really heavenly. Uh, I felt really loved and connected to my friends uh, and family and so grateful for this opportunity to show the work and be part of this artistic community. Thanks for listening and watching.